hey guys welcome back to my channel my name is anu if you're new here or if you have not subscribed please consider subscribing so today's video we're going to be talking about studying for the almighty usmle step one studying for the step one exam so eventually i'm going to do a video with medical students different medical students talking about the experiences studying for the step one exam but for now because i know that some of you guys are currently studying for your step one exam i just thought i would put out a video with some lessons and some tips that i learned studying for my step one exam last year so i've broken this video into two parts and the first part i'm going to talk about what you should do before your dedicated study period and then the other part i'm going to talk about what you should do during your dedicated studying period and if there's anybody here who has taken your usmle step one exam already then and you have any tips that i did not mention in this video please go ahead and leave it in the comments so everyone is able to learn from it before your dedicated study period um here are some things you should do the number one tip i would give is to start early with the usmle step one exam starting early would always benefit you especially for those of us who are imgs well not a graduate yet but you know i would be considered an img an international medical graduate your score on the usmle step one exam is everything or at least it's very important so you want to make sure that you know you start early so you're able to acquire as much information before you actually take the exam what i would recommend is before your first day of medical school you should get a first aid for step one book for whatever year that is and make sure you have it with you for your first day so as you're studying for your classes your tests your exams if there's something that your lecturer says that is profound or that you think will be high yield you can always annotate your first aid book with it so by the end of those two years now of basic sciences you have this wonderful book all your information in one place and all the, that juicy wonderful details in one place in one book so you want to make sure you do that if you can and if you're no longer in term one you're in term two or term three or whatever term you're in you didn't do that it's okay start now better late than never um so my second tip i would say would be to watch the boards and beyond videos okay so boards and beyond videos are very detailed and they cover everything from basics to the not so basics um to the more complicated things so but it's 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 a lot of detail so i would say do it before your dedicated studying because during your dedicated studying you want to focus on high yield materials that are likely to come out on the step one exam i would say for my caribbean medical students or for my international medical students who do not go to a school that covers the usmle step one curriculum boards and beyond are your best friend just hold on to it love it know it in and out before that dedicated studying period so another thing i would say and this is specifically for my sgu people i would say use your term five wisely so in sgu term five is probably the most stressful term ever but i would say make sure you use it wisely to prepare for the usmle step one exam but also mentally speaking make sure you don't burn out during that time because you don't want to be going into dedicated studying for step one burnt out so pace yourself during term five my fourth tip would be to watch your sketchy micro and your sketchy farm during your time before your dedicated studying so during your regular school when you're taking a microbiology course or the pharmacology course then watch sketchy videos alongside with that so sketchy videos are like cartoonized um, learning they tend to cartoonize the concept and then relate specific objects in the scene to a medical concept so for example one of the videos related helicopters to helicobacter pylori so now whenever i think of h pylori i'm thinking of that helicopter and i remember all the scenes that it's urease positive um and all of the, all that is in sketchy video and i personally think it's such a fun way of learning and it's amazing so it's a resource i would definitely recommend i personally prefer the sketchy micro to sketchy farm but i know people who swear by both so go ahead and use them the last point i would give for before dedicated studying is to make flashcards if you're a flashcards type of lear learner so one of the most popular ones that i know that again i personally didn't use but i know people who did and people who love it is Anki. So with Anki though, there sometimes you can find pre-made 
um, pre-made flashcards that you can use. So if you want to buy those or get them for free, you can use those as well. But I would say if you're a flashcards type of person, do it before you're dedicated studying. All right, so now let's talk about what to do during your dedicated study period. So this is the time that you're doing nothing else but just studying for the USMLE Step 1 exam. Number one tip I would say is to use few main resources. And what I mean by that is to limit the amount of resources that you use during that dedicated study period to three. I would say three is the maximum. And we all know the holy trinity of USMLE Step 1 studying, which is UFAPS, UWorld, First Aid, and Pathoma. And I think those three are okay, are amazing to be your main resource for the step one exam. Obviously, it's okay to, if you need to refresh your mind on a certain concept, it's okay to, you know, peek and watch a Boards and Beyond video or go back to your sketchy farm or sketchy micro just for a little bit and then come back to your main resources. You don't want to have seven resources and then have your brain scattered in every direction. Pick three resources, know them, master them. Better to be a master of three than a jack of seven. Wow. The second point I would give is to use your connecting times wisely. So what I mean by connecting times are, for example, going from, let's say, your home to the library. Like when I would go from my house to the library, that 10 minutes drive, I would make sure I'm listening to a podcast talking about USMLE style questions. Or one that I loved was Golgen Pathology. And um, Dr. Golgen just went through pathological concepts and I, it just helped me keep my mind active. So I was also actively learning even as I was connecting to somewhere. And I did that also when I was walking from my dorm in Chicago to the place I did my tutorial for the USMLE Step 1. Um, so I would say do that. Or even if you're having a chill Saturday or you just don't feel like picking up a book at that point in time, then just put in your headphones and listen to something that would, to a podcast or to people answering questions, or just sit down and think about questions that you've already done, just so you make sure you're actively learning. The third point I would say, especially for my IMGs, is if you're able to take a course to prepare for the step one exam, I would say go ahead and do it. For me, at first, I didn't want to take a course because I didn't think I needed it, but I got to a point where my NBME exams were the scores were plateauing and I was like, okay, maybe I do need a bit more help. So luckily I was able to get into the Delphi program in Chicago with Dr. Roy. Amazing program. I have nothing but good reviews for that program. And it was amazing. Probably one of the best decisions I made during my dedicated study period. It was very helpful. It, I saw my points moving upward, my scores, my NBME scores moving upward. So I would say do that. It doesn't have to be Delphi, but go ahead and find one that fits you. My fourth point would be to have a concrete schedule that is not overreaching. Um, I think you just have to sit down and have an honest conversation with yourself and say, okay, how many hours a day do I want to study for? Eight hours a day. And then plan your time accordingly. Don't overreach. Be Just do it according to the way you've been doing it before. Because you've been studying before for the last two years or however many years of medical school you've gone through, you were able to study. So you basically know how you study already. So plan according to that. And another thing that I think is important is to take breaks, take scheduled breaks. So schedule breaks into your schedule. Personally, I used Cram Fighter to make a schedule um, and I would recommend it. And I made sure I had scheduled break days. I think it was every other Wednesday for me, no, every other Sunday. And then my catch up days were every other Wednesday. And I think it's important to have both. It's amazing if you don't have anything to do on those catch-up days, then you can just get ahead of your schedule. But then if you do have some things to catch up on, like your you world questions that you haven't finished reviewing, <laughs> then go ahead and do those on those catch-up days. So breaks are important for your mental health. And then catch-up days just help you keep up with all the things you're learning. Another tip I would give is to do your you world questions timed. So you world has options where you can do it either tutored, or timed or tutor timed. I would say do it timed because with timed, it's it personally for me, it makes me focus. It's like, okay, for the next hour, for the next 60 minutes, I'm just gonna sit here and do this 40 questions, this block of UWorld questions. For me, when I do tutored, I usually am lazy because you know, you do the question, you click submit, the answer comes out, then you read through it, and you're like, oh, I'm hungry, let me go get something to eat. Then you it's just I would just prefer to sit down, do it timed, then go through it later. 
And this actually goes into your scheduling. I would say it takes an hour to do a U world block, but then it takes almost like two, three hours to review it. And I think it's very important to review those questions because if you're just doing questions and not reviewing it, then you're wasting the resource. So make sure you do your U world questions and then schedule enough time to review whatever it is that you've just done. So just as a general rule of thumb, you want to do U world twice. Um, and then if you have time, you can do the incorrect or do it one more time. So another thing that is important to do is to take the NBME practice exams. I would say take your first one after two weeks or three weeks of dedicated studying and then make sure you do all seven. I think there are about seven on the website. So just to see how you're going to be able to gauge your progress and all of that. Um, so it's important to do that. Next one would be to simulate the step exam before you go for the exam. What I mean by that is the step exam is eight hours long. So seven hours of actual exam and then an hour of break time, an hour of break and tutorial. Um, so I would say a week before your exam, have three days that you've set out to simulate the exam. So in those days, you wanna do seven UWorld blocks and then plan it out as though you were writing the exam. So if your plan was to write um, two hours of the exam, then take a 15 minute break or write an hour of the exam and take a 10 minute break. Whatever your plan was, make sure you go through it on those days. And I would say do that at least three times because as much as the USMLE step one is an educational exam and it's testing your knowledge, in a way it's an endurance exam. It's also mental. You want to make sure that you've built up your endurance for that. If you can do it more than three times, then go ahead and do that. And then the last point I would say is to plan out what you want your step one exam to look like. If you want to do the first two hours and then take a 10 minute break, then do another hour and then take lunch. One way to save time is to do the tutorial before the exam. That gives you 15 extra minutes. So actually, technically the break time is 45 minutes, but if you take the tutorial before the exam, then it's you add that 15 minutes to your 45 minutes to make an hour. So that's another thing I would say. And that's it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. If you enjoyed it and you think someone else might benefit from it, please go ahead and share this video. If you have any tips that you want to add, go ahead and leave it in the comments that it might help somebody. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Um, and I will see you on my next one. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.